First, we'll start by assembling the rail systems and gantries of the CNC Mill 1. To start, you'll need to grab a 10mm wrench to secure your M5 nuts or a 10mm socket wrench. You'll also need Allen keys for driving M8, M5, and M3 hardware. You won't need an Allen key to tighten the coupler since it comes with its own Allen key. When you unpack the rail system hardware bag, you should find the V-groove bearings, M5 bolts, lead screw nuts, M5 washers, M5 nuts, eccentric nuts, long M3 bolts, M3 nuts, short M3 bolts, and three bags with the couplers. You might also notice some additional short M3 bolts and nuts are included in case you misplace them. Start off by assembling the lead screw nut mounts. You'll notice that two of your nut mounts are the same color and one is different. This is because one of them is a mirror of the other two. Despite this, assembling either mount is the same. Take your mount, lead screw nut, and two long M3 bolts with nuts and begin by placing the first nut into the trap. Then slide your lead screw nut into its groove and hold both nuts in place while you slide the M3 bolt in and tighten into place. Do this with the other nut and bolt. Once you've assembled all three nut mounts, you can begin placing them on the XZ gantry. Place the first of the two similar mounts facing upward and align the holes without nut traps to the holes in the gantry. Then press two M5 bolts into place. On the other side, you'll be attaching the mirrored mount facing horizontally. This will mean that the bolts will line up with the mount's nut traps. From here, you can press the two M5 nuts into place and secure the mounts to the gantry. Prepare the remaining nut mount and two M5 bolts and nuts and attach them to the Y gantry. You can see by the positioning of the holes that the lead screw nut will face upward to pick up the rails later on. Push the M5 bolts into place. Then place the nut mount on the other side with the M5 nuts. After tightening, both gantries will now be prepared to accept their respective driving lead screws. Now you'll be attaching the V-groove bearings to the gantries. There will be three sets for each axis on the machine. Two will mount to the XZ gantry and one will mount to the Y gantry. These sets will consist of four V-groove bearings, four M5 washers, two M5 nuts, two eccentric nuts, and four M5 bolts. Begin by assembling the subassembly consisting of a bolt, bearing, and washer. You'll need four of these per axis. If you notice that a bearing has an offset disc, simply Grab a small, long object and push it in to push the disc back in place. Starting with the gantry, look at the hole sizes of the inner holes 
and you'll notice that the two right holes are larger. This confirms that the rail will attach vertically since each smaller hole must be paired with a larger one which will contain the eccentric nut. You can begin placing the V-wheel assembly into the left holes of the gantry and securing them with regular M5 nuts and a wrench. Afterwards, you'll place the two eccentric nuts into place. Notice that since they have an offset threaded hole, it will allow you to later adjust the compression that the wheels have on the aluminum rail, but leave them wide for now. Screw the other two V-wheel assemblies into the eccentric nuts. You'll repeat these same mounting steps on the other side of the XZ gantry as well as the Y gantry. Now you'll attach the three motors to three rail brackets using all of the short M3 bolts. Unpack the motors. Then grab the first motor and bracket. It's important that the connector on the motor is on the same side as the left flange of the bracket, so be sure to line these up before screwing the motor into place. Lastly, place an M3 bolt in each of the four holes and tighten them into place. After doing the same for the other two sets, you'll now connect the brackets to the aluminum rails using two short M8 bolts each, which you should find in the frame hardware bag. Grab the rail and the motor assembly, line up the holes, and attach them together using the two bolts. Repeat this for the other two sets with the other two rails. You can now slide the aluminum rail into place. It will start off quite loose, so you can take your wrench and slowly twist the eccentric nuts 
until they provide the right amount of compression on the rails. This will be indicated once it's no longer easy to spin the bearings by hand. You'll repeat these same mounting and tightening steps on the other side of the XZ gantry, as well as the Y gantry. Take your time on this step. Under compressing the rails will result in worse tolerances on your machine, but over compressing them might cause damage to some machine parts or put too much stress on the stepper motors. You'll now finally attach the gantries to their respective rails. Begin by grabbing the three couplers and attaching a coupler to the end of each of the lead screws. Be sure to firmly press the couplers onto the lead screws until they're on all the way, then secure both set screws. If you notice that the set screws in the coupler are screwed in too far, you'll have to back them off a bit before the lead screw will fit in. Grab the XZ gantry and screw the short lead screw into the vertically facing coupler. Once the lead screw is halfway on, you can push the short Z rail over top, feeding it through the bearings. The goal is to line up a set screw with the flat part of the stepper motor axle. Once in place, the set screw can be tightened and the set screw on the other side can also be tightened. These steps will be repeated on the other side of the XZ gantry as well as the Y gantry. A good way to check that your bearing compression is correct is that the gantry should be a little difficult to initially put on, but should slide smoothly once in place. Also, if you notice that it's difficult to turn the lead screws by hand after installation, try loosening the bolts of the lead screw nut mount a little. Then turn the lead screw a few rotations and re-tighten the bolts.
Once the rails are installed on the gantries, one of the last steps is to cap off the X and Y axes with the two remaining rail mounting brackets. Use two short M8 bolts for each of these. Finally, grab your custom router mount and the two remaining short M8 bolts which will be used to secure it. Bolt the mount to the bottom of the Z-axis rail. There should also be two long M8 bolts and nuts which will fit on the front of the mount. Congratulations on completing the core assemblies of your Mill 1. These gantry assemblies will incorporate into the full frame where you'll finish building the machine. See you in the next video.